This is a map of the world from the Viking Age of Discovery. One of the places it shows is a large uninhabited island now called Iceland. But in summer it's more like a land of waterfalls as melting ice finds its way down towards the sea and on the way creating photo opportunities for tourists. My hand was so cold and hurting. This waterfall is one you can walk underneath and only get a little bit wet. It's a very pretty stop on Iceland's Highway 1, the road that rings the entire island. The landscape is quite spectacular, especially in summer, when it's much easier to get up close to the glaciers. The black parts that look like rock are actually ice, coated with dust and dark, wind-blown volcanic sand. You'll need a guide and special footwear if you want to walk on the slippery ice. To the south is the Atlantic Ocean and windswept black sandy beaches. And there are rocky plains formed from molten lava flows. Now covered with lichen, it's like a scene from another world. It can't have been easy for the first settlers to explore or even move across this landscape. They call this the church floor because at first glance the shapes look like man-made tiles. Hexagonal shapes are quite common in Iceland. They're formed in certain conditions when lava cools in a particular way. But it's easy to think that a human hand might have been involved. The name of this waterfall literally translates as Black Waterfall because of the dark basalt columns that surround it. It's amazing to realise that this ice was frozen before Christopher Columbus set sail for America. Roughly how old is this ice? When was it? It's really hard to say, but in the average time it takes for them to start off a snowflake and fall onto the top of the glacier and melt into the glacier and break off into the water. It takes roughly 600 to 700 years. The icebergs' black bands are a bit like tree rings, except each one is made of ash from a different volcanic eruption. The glacier, like so many everywhere, is in retreat. Each year it's losing more ice than it's being replaced.
Highway 1 has a lot of single lane bridges. They are usually marked by a yellow flashing light to warn you to think about oncoming traffic. Fortunately, there isn't that much traffic, even in summer. The speed limit is only 90 kilometers per hour, which is just as well because the scenery is quite distracting. The high country in Iceland's north is often described as a desert, but not because of lack of water. It's because when the first settlers cut down the original forests, there was so much soil erosion that the fragile landscape has never recovered. Even now, with the best will in the world, regenerating soil is not easy in such a cold climate. This waterfall Detifoss is the most powerful in Europe. It's 100 metres wide and plunges 44 metres. The opening scene of the movie Prometheus was shot at the smaller waterfall slightly upstream. There's a puffin at four o'clock for those of you who want to see it. Oh, they're jumping! Jumping at two o'clock! At nine. Very close to the boat at nine o'clock. And some of them at one and two, so we have them on both sides of the boat. Wow. 
Well, we didn't have a lot of success with the whales, but we did get to see some dolphins, which was pretty good fun. Uh, and this is kind of quite extraordinary that there's absolutely beautiful mountain behind us. We couldn't see it at all until the last time. But there you go. Yet another selfie location. These falls could also have been a location in the Prometheus movie. The most historic landmark in Iceland is Thingvalo National Park. It's Iceland's most sacred site. This symbol, now used by Apple for the command key, is the Nordic symbol for a place of special cultural significance. It was here more than a thousand years ago, in 930 AD, that Iceland established its first parliament. Those early pioneers recognised that there was something very special about this place, but they didn't exactly know why. Where I'm walking, it's actually quite an interesting part of the world. Over here on this side is the Eurasian tectonic plate. Keep going that way, you'll come to all of Europe, takes you all the way through almost to Asia. On the other side, just over here, is the American plate. And what's happening in between, in the middle here, is new earth is being pushed up and squeezing these two things apart, pushing these two things apart. Quite extraordinary, really. I think, I think if I had been come here as a kid and seen all of this geology in action, I would have become a geologist, no question about it. It's just so fascinating. So much of the geology is still alive and functioning, happening right here in Iceland. All of that geologic activity means that Iceland has a huge resource of geothermal energy. They didn't begin to tap it until the early 1900s, but now it's used as a carbon-free way to power the country's electricity grid, as well as to draw hot water to heat their homes. And the crater is in this direction, 10 kilometers away, 6 miles away, called Mount Leitin and late in lava fields are very extensive and they, uh, the eruption uh, lasted for three years. Uh, this lava is very, very hot, 1200 degrees Celsius, 2200 Fahrenheit, and it flows relatively easy, almost like water, at least like uh, runny uh, honey. And uh, just like rivers, they dig themselves down onto the existing layers, and just like a river in the winter time, there comes a crust because of the cold uh, air, and then we have a closed tunnel. So we are walking towards the crater lifted. But the tunnel does not go all those uh, 10 kilometers. It's only 1.4 kilometer long, where it uh, hasn't collapsed. And it's always going to be spacious, so no need to worry about that. No tight spaces. Any questions about the formation? With so many waterfalls, Iceland generates about a fifth of its electricity from hydro. But after a very long battle, this powerful and majestic waterfall was spared. Left untouched, it's become a major drawcard for Iceland's tourist industry. And tourism now employs about 12% of Iceland's workforce. It is about a third of its export income. About 2 million people visit Iceland every year, and all of them travel in much more comfort than those original Viking pioneers.